it's Melly, and thank you guys for jumping into the nook. It's time for my February reading wrap up. Hi guys, and welcome back to my channel. It's time for another quick and easy reading wrap up of all the books that I read in February. So these are short and quick videos, so let's jump right into it. All right, so for the month of February, the M&M TBR jar gave me seven books to read. I did actually manage to read seven books once again. Were they all seven for my TBR? No, but four out of the seven of them were. So, so far I've been doing pretty okay. It was kind of the same for January. I also had seven books on my TBR, read four out of the seven, so I'm batting the same at this point. All right, so time for the genre breakdown. I ended up reading three adult romances. Now, a lot of them were very heavy on the contemporary, but for the sake of just trying to be more specific, they were in the adult romance category. And then I had one YA contemporary book that ended up being a DNF, one YA fantasy book, and one other, which was a contemporary book, as well as one adult sci-fi. Now, in terms of the star ratings, we had also quite a variety. I had two five-star books, one 4.5, one four-star, one 3.5, one three-star, and one DNF. So a little bit of everything this time around. For the most part, February kind of went in a different direction than I had envisioned. It was definitely really heavy on the contemporary topics. A lot of it was more nuanced and like heavy hitting. And even though I had quite a bit of fantasy and sci-fi books, the ones that I ended up picking up the most were contemporary. So it was a pretty contemporary heavy month. All right, so jumping into the first book I read, it was a YA fantasy book, Lost Kingdom by Laurel Black. So technically I started this book in January, but it carried on into February and I read the majority of it in February. So this is a debut new release YA fantasy, the beginning of a series. Um, and this one I ended up giving 3.5. Now as a YA fantasy book, I felt like it was a perfect formula for YA fantasy. It was incredibly predictable, but not necessarily in a bad way, more of a fit every single trope that you could possibly imagine in a YA fantasy book. I thought it was written well, the characters were great, the setting and the world building was wonderful, but it didn't really bring anything new that I haven't seen before. Yet I would recommend this to other people who are interested in getting started into YA fantasy because I feel like this is like a very easy staple read and I'm excited to continue on with the series. Second book was Talking at Night by Claire Daverly. Now this is a adult contemporary romance, though it was kind of 50-50 on the contemporary and romance. It's a very melancholy, kind of nostalgic type of read, very slow moving, in which we're following two main characters and their different POVs as they are kind of like childhood almost lovers, miss their chance, and it's basically the rest of their life trying to will they, won't they, in their romantic aspect. Um, this one definitely had a lot of heavy topics to it, and honestly, I really enjoyed reading this book when I read it and ultimately gave it five stars at the end of my reading experience. However, quickly soon after, within like a week or two, I had forgotten I had even read this book. <laughs> like, I enjoyed it while I read it, but it quickly became unmemorable. And so I honestly, in good conscience, can't keep this one at a five star, considering I forgot half the time that I read this book. So I have actually bumped it down to a 4.5. For the third book, we have Couplets by Maggie Milner, and this is a poetry collection. It's rather a smaller, shorter book, and this one has to deal with a woman entering a lesbian relationship for the first time and talking about sexuality, gender identity, and just kind of the nuances of dating in your late 20s, early 30s. Um, for this book, I ended up giving it three stars. I had very neutral, kind of lukewarm reactions to it. I read it, it was really quick and easy to read, but honestly the poetry part of it kind of like went over my head. Um, and it was an okay read, but I really didn't feel like I got anything from it and it just wasn't the book for me but objectively speaking it wasn't a bad book and it wasn't written terribly um so i'm giving this one next up for number four we have the sweet spot by amy papel this one is an adult contemporary romance though it's really 90 percent contemporary and only 10 percent romance and i actually ended up loving that factor way more than this being a typical contemporary romance this one is my five star pick and so far my favorite book that i read in the month of february we are following three different central characters 
who are kind of caught up in this weird kind of way as there's a lot of characters that their storylines kind of intersect and it's think of like modern family and how all the characters are kind of connected in almost a familial type of way it takes place in new york with the main premise of it being a baby that's left on their doorstep and they all have to find the mother um i found this one really comedic i absolutely loved all these quirky characters and the different povs i love the fact that this was more contemporary heavy instead of romance and i was just laughing the entire time that i was reading this book so highly recommend it i feel like this is one of those books that not a lot of people know and have picked up but I highly recommend if you love more of a comedic contemporary story to pass the time so yeah this one was definitely five stars really really enjoyed it and definitely want to pick up more books from the author in the future for number five I have a reread and that is my adult sci-fi book a prayer for the crown shy by Becky Chambers now this is the second book in the monk and robot duology and this was my attempt to reread the duology with my cousin Greta as we were reviewing both of the books now this this one is a reread and it's still a five star for me. I absolutely adore this book. Now I will say the one thing is the first time I read this book I did cry multiple times and the second time around I didn't cry so I didn't get the same emotional reaction to it but I think it's because I had read it quite recently within the last year or so but it was still definitely a book and a book series that I wanted to reread because it holds a very special place in my heart and I enjoyed it. This little novella that I got to you know, reconnect with. All right, for number six, we have the Y contemporary book, When the Vibe is Right by Sarah Das. Now, I was really excited to pick up this book because it is set in Trinidad, which is somewhere different than the US from every other Y contemporary book that I pick up. And honestly, I had heard such good reviews about this book, so I was really excited to give it a try. Unfortunately, this one ended up being my DNF, my first DNF of 2024, and I really couldn't stand the book. Now, looking back at the Goodreads reviews, there's a lot of four and five stars for this book of people who adored the characters and adored the plotline, and I actually found only one one-star review where I completely connected with it, and it was 100% my feelings in the review which was ultimately that I just really didn't like the main character and that really hindered my enjoyment of the book. She was incredibly unlikable for me, so unfortunately I only got through about 10% of the book and I, I knew that it wasn't going to be for me. So ultimately had to DNF it, so sad it didn't work out for me, but a lot of other people really, really enjoy this book, so check it out if you think you're going to like it because you probably are going to. And last but not least, the seventh book that I read was Love at 350 Degrees by Lisa Pierce. This is another adult contemporary romance, and luckily this is also another 90% contemporary and only 10% romance book that I really, really enjoyed. Um, we're following two different POVs of these two different women in their early 40s. One is a chemistry teacher mother whose children are leaving to go to college and so she's going to be an empty nester and the other perspective is a celebrity baker now these two meet one one is the judge for a baking competition and the other one is a contestant and it's this like really cute wholesome female romance um this one was adorable through and through four stars absolutely loved it highly recommend it's just a sweet book. All right, and last but not least, I'm gonna be talking about the two books that I started in February, but both of these are carrying on over to March. So that is How Long Till Black Future Month by N.K. Jemisin and Who Fears Death by Nendi Okrafor. So this is a adult sci-fi book and this one is a fantasy collection of short stories. Um, so for both of these books, I have started on it. I am majority of the way through this book, just started this one. And unfortunately, I ran out of time to finish both of these books in February but I'm carrying them over into March. And the one book on my February TBR that I didn't even get a chance to start, unfortunately, is The Final Strife by Sarah L. Arifi. Um, so this one is a chunky, chunky adult fantasy book. And unfortunately, I just didn't even get a chance to start this book. I just ran out of time, which is unfortunate because this is one of my five star predictions. And yes, this means this is the second month in a row that I didn't get to my five star prediction adult fantasies. So at some point, I'm going to have to do some kind of video to catch up on them because for some reason, I am just not getting to my big and chunky books. 
All right, guys, so that is it for all of the books that I read in February. We have already started March and I have a huge TBR, but I'm really excited to get to all of those books and get to a wide variety of genres. And hopefully I can keep to my TBR a little bit better. I've been so far doing okay but I can be better about it. All right, guys, so you know the drill. Please be sure to give me a likes and thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Comment down below if you guys have read any of the books and tell me what your thoughts are. And as always, if you guys are enjoying my bookish content, please be sure to subscribe for some more. I'm Millie. Thank you guys for jumping into the nook. Bye!